Hey everybody, my name's Kai and I know how to do a really cool trick with augmented reality and it's where I download geographical data from the planet. It could be underwater data or you know on land or whatever. It basically gives me something called global multi-resolution topography and so that's why we have an acronym uh, at the name of this website. It's called GMRT or gmrt.org. And so let's just get right into it because I don't like wasting time. I know you don't either. So I've already previously highlighted a little spot, but if you guys go to gmrt.org, to the map tool specifically, you'll find there's a subcategory there. I'm zooming up on a very particular location. Now, see guys, I could actually download the Mariana Trench if I wanted to, but I'm actually going to go all the way over here to a place that I went to when I was 19 years old. I was in a youth symphony and I played the timpani and percussion and shit, you know, so I was, I was like Mr. Music back in one of my old lifetimes. And I went to this little valley in, in Switzerland. It's called Champere, Switzerland. And I want to download this data. So I want to show you guys how I do this trick. So I've already previously highlighted this because you don't, you'll notice you don't get any like names or anything from the satellite imagery. You have to just look up the latitude and longitude, which is right over here. And that allows you to get the information. So here it is. Once you highlight a section, you basically choose it by saying create grid file right here. And then finally, you'll see like a plethora of formats, guys, and you're going to get lost in the labyrinth of formats, but just follow me step by step and you'll make it right. So you'll want a GeoTIFF file, okay? So it's, that's a .tif file. That's the extension. Now, trust me when I say this, guys, it took me months and months and months to do this, and I'm condensing this down into 10 minutes. So I am saving you so much time. Anyway, let's get going. So you'll notice you have more options. This mask thing, I don't really care about that. I always leave it. I don't I don't even mess with it. I go down here to grid resolution and you can choose from low, medium, high or maximum. I'm going to choose maximum because it's only four megabytes. It's not that big. And then you say download grid. So this tool gives me something called a .tif file, right? Like that's what I mentioned. And I have a special folder called geotiffs that I keep it in. You'll definitely want to organize this, guys. Otherwise, your desktop is going to look like mine. <laughs> you don't want that. So I'm going to call it Champere, Switzerland. And once we save this tool, boom, we have the information. Okay. So the next tool we're going to use is something called QGIS. And now you have to go to the QGIS website and download this tool. But QGIS looks just like this when you finally download it and there's like nothing going on. It looks like it's a program from the 90s. Well, we're going to import our, our TIF file. So we go to project. Uh, do we? <laughs> import, export. That's what we want. Actually, you know what? Forgive me. This is what you actually do. You go over here to where you downloaded it, where it says Champere, and there's an easier way to do this. I'm going to move myself up here. And you just kind of go right over here, drag and drop your freshly downloaded, downloaded TIF file, and get out of the way. You'll see that this is a grayscale image. So this grayscale image shows us the actual elevation features. Now, here comes the cool part. We're going to do something called an overlay of satellite imagery. So basically the texture, if you will. So that's when we come all the way back into QGIS and we go to this little HCMGIS thing. And then you'll see this whole thing that says base map. Now, when I installed this, I had to download and then it gave me this base map data. So there's a name for it and I just can't remember it off the top of my head. You guys will have to find it. So forgive me. But for now, we're going to go with Google Satellite and then bam, the magic begins. There's the Swiss Alps right in front of our face. Now, how do we get to see it in the third dimension, right? Like, I think this is Lake Zurich up here. I'm not sure, but I'm not from Europe. Otherwise, I would know. But this is the area that I'm interested in. I want this detail. There's a cute little mountain town right up in here. So in order to get that three-dimensional data, I go to this little tiny tool. It's called the Lambda tool, and I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice that finally I get given this, this kind of pop-up screen. And if I check this little check mark right here where it says Champere, Switzerland, it generates a three-dimensional map. 
However, the data that I downloaded for the .tif file is really, really stretched out. And I'm like, I don't know what I did right there, right? In the beginning, I was like, how is this working? How did I do this? So I'll tell you guys how I fixed it. It took me a long time to fix this. But first off, I'm going to right click on Champerey, Switzerland in that little sub menu, open up properties. And then I'm going to sample this at the maximum resampling level. And this just helps not helps keep the, the the image not pixelated. And then you're gonna say apply. See, if you don't do that, you're gonna get kind of a choppy looking image in your three-dimensional Terran. So that's why I choose that. And so I say, okay. Finally, I'm gonna export seen as dot GLB or GLTF. They seem to be related. So now that I have that, it's very important that you once again organize what you just downloaded. So here we have Champere, Switzerland, and I'm putting it into one of my 3D asset folders called 3D Scans. Uh, it looks like I can't spell and speak at the same time, guys. All right, so there it is. Now I have this huge file. I mean, it's going to be hundreds of kilobytes, you know, and God forbid you open one of these inside of Blender when you have it like that, because it's not even going to open. It's going to freeze, crash. So you have to do one more thing. So I like to go, ah, there's my desktop. <laughs> you have to go to a program called Mesh Lab, and then you have to import. Don't look at my desktop. Stop it. You have to import the file. So I just downloaded it. We're going to import Mesh. Mesh Lab is a freeware, by the way. You can download it for free. And it's used mainly to reduce large files down to, you know, less polygraphy. So if you're talking about the 3D CAD modeling world, this is not related. This is specifically 3D imagery. It is not parametric modeling. So two big differences. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about yet, don't worry about it. Later on down the road, this is going to mean everything to you. But here we go. So we're going to get the file I just downloaded, which is in my 3D scan folder, and it's called Champere, Switzerland. So I look for Champ. Here it is. Okay. So you'll see a little pop-up window appears, and I say OK. Now, it's funny, but it, like, it gives me a little warning message, and then all of a sudden, like you can't see the model, but it is there. It's faintly there. You can see it right there, and it's stretched out of proportion like it was in QGIS. So this is what I'm going to do, guys. I'm actually not going to mess with it yet, but I am going to do this. I'm going to go to filters. I'm going to go to something called remeshing, simplification, reconstruction. And then I'm going to go all the way down to another one called simplification, quadratic edge collapse, decimation, lose your breath, yada, yada, yada. And then you'll see that I get the option to reduce the target number of faces. And so you'll see it's already been defaulted to 0.3. I'm going to say apply. So what I'm doing, guys, is I'm reducing the mesh. So it's, it consists of thousands of triangles, right? Hundreds of thousands of triangles. I'm reducing it a lot. And you have to do this in order to get it to pop up in augmented reality. Because if you don't, it won't load. There's too much information. So I might be one of the only people that do this right now. But after you watch this video, you can do it too. So I just, I just reduced those triangles substantially. And so I'm going to get out of there and then I'm going to export file. Okay. So now that I've done that, I'm going to export mesh as. Now you'll notice I can't just export it as the same file format outside of mesh lab. That's just the way it goes. It's an idiosyncrasy. So I'm going to export it as an object file because you can export texture with it. So here we go. Champere, Switzerland, OBJ. I'm just going to save. I'm going to, I'm going to say, Switzerland, simped. I like to say that word because I am one. Just kidding. All right, so there we go. So I just simplified Champere, Switzerland through Mesh Lab, and I wouldn't do it any any other way because it's like it's it's a nightmare if you do. So guys, this is Blender. I know that a lot of you are already cringing, going, "Oh shit, not Blender." Yeah, Blender is very very confusing, but if you figure out the basics, you'll figure it all out. This is another AR project I was doing earlier. I was having a question mark on my head and tracking my face in TikTok effect house, but I'm going to let that go for now because I'm not done with that yet. But I am going to import what we just saved in the uh, 
the wave file. Yeah, import OBJ. My face is in the way. I'm going to move it over here. So where is 3D scans? Okay, sorry, I got to concentrate. You know how it is when you're a messy artist. I just imported Champere, Switzerland. It's going to be alphabetical. There you are. Simped. Import. So guys, when I when I first started learning from Blender, it was the most frustrating thing I have ever taken up because the problem with Blender and the problem with people who show you Blender is that they just go. They just click through a million things and they use hotkeys and stuff and you can't even tell what they're doing. I'm not going to leave you hanging. In fact, I've got something that's going to be very, very friendly as I do this and it's not loaded. <laughs> Forget it. Okay, so I, I had like a, a little hotkey thing that showed which mouse button I was clicking. I'll just have to tell you. All right, guys, here it is. Here's our file. It's all stretched out of proportion. And you'll notice that Blender does a pretty decent job of being like, hey, here it is. And I've simplified it. So now guess what I have to do? I'm going to take that file and I'm actually going to manually unstretch it. So I'm going to like bring it down and you'll notice that if I go too far, it goes inverted immediately. So I have to kind of go this like just inch by inch by inch until it comes down to what it's supposed to be. Guys, I can't tell you how long it took me to figure this stuff out. I was just like messing around day after day after day. I've wasted a lot of my time to do this. But as I zoom up on this, you'll see that this is the Swiss Alps. And if you're feeling more adventurous, let's get some texture. So right up here, there's a little button that says viewport shading. I'm going to click on this next sphere here, the second to the old or second to the right. And like magic, there they are, a special set of mountain ranges and a little tiny town called Champere, Switzerland. It's in there somewhere, but here it is. So these are the mountain ranges that I was interested in. And now that I have that information, I have some more work to do. So what I'm going to do now, this, this video is going way over 10 minutes, by the way. That's okay. I'm going to shrink my face down just a bit because I'm going to do some special things I learned in Blender. So guys, we're going to do something next called Boolean splitting or cutting. And what that means is I'm going to trim away the flat details and just leave behind only the three-dimensional details. So in order to do that, I have to create or add right here a mesh. So I'm going to add four plane or four cubes, excuse me. So I like to do cubes because they're just easy to work with, even though this one just blew up in our face. I'm going to bring it down a ways and zoom up. And uh, you guys will have to forgive me because this is the only way I could ever figure this thing out. Blender is a very powerful, versatile tool, but it has so many things to learn. And it's the epitome of over-optimization. There's nothing wrong with that, I guess. But, you know, sometimes it just drives you up the wall. Anyway, guys, something I, I forgot to do was to rotate this. But for the sake of just, like, learning, let's just keep it like this for now. Actually, you know what I'm going to do, guys? I'm going to select everything. We're going to rotate by pressing the R key. And then we're going to choose the x-axis and say 90. No, we're not. Not 90. Uh, we're going to choose 180. Enter. Sorry, I'm just like getting through this. x90. There you go. I should have done negative 90. <laughs> Whew. Okay. So there we are. We've got our we've got our map. Now it's right side up. And I'm working on eliminating the two-dimensional features with the three-dimensional. So now that I have one cube, I'm going to control C and control V to copy and paste or duplicate. I could simply do shift D as well, I've learned. But, you know, just to keep it simple, let's keep with copy and paste. And I'm just going to drag and drop my cube to fit just on the outside of the land formation. There it is, right there. And then, of course, I'm going to create two more cubes. So uh, control V because I already copied one. And then I'm going to rotate it rotate and we're going to rotate it by let's say the y dimension by 90 degrees no sorry guys i'm actually going to do the uh, the z axis so rotate the z axis by 90 degrees 
So the way I did that, guys, was I pressed down. I'll do it again, actually. I pressed down on the R key to rotate, to begin the rotate command. I know, guys, it's very frustrating. I can already feel your frustration in the future, and I'm just like feeling it now for myself in the past. So I, I freaking feel you. But let's just get this done. Let's get this over with. This is a very difficult thing to learn on your own. So here it is, guys. I've basically built four cubes with which are going to slice and cut away the two-dimensional data on the outside of our three-dimensional plane. And by the way, really quick, the way I did the rotation, guys, was I hit the R key once I select a cube with my mouse. I hit the R key once, and then I choose the axis by hitting X, Y, or Z. So if I hit Y, then I can move it on the Y axis any direction, or I can hit a numerical value like 75. And as you can see, it like moves it for you. But I don't want to do that, so I press Escape. You can press Enter in order to get it to stay. Okay, anyway, so let's move on to cutting this thing out. So we're moving on to something called Boolean splitting. And so in order to do that, there's a little tool here called Modifier Properties. I click on that, and then I choose the Boolean modifier, which is right here. So I click on that, and then finally, we have two more steps to cut this thing open. So not to cut it open, but to cut it out. And so what I'm going to do here is choose a little eyedropper after I select the land. Okay, so press and select the asset of your three-dimensional model. Add your modifier, Boolean. That's one step I forgot. Then you're going to choose your little eyedrop thing here in the object menu. You're going to choose the eyedrop. You're going to click on only one cube at a time. So there's one. So you'll know that it worked if it says cube in the object menu. That's what you want. Sometimes it doesn't work because you clicked on a wrong feature of the cube, right? It can be very temperamental. So just be careful where you click. Now you'll notice I have to do one more thing. I can't just leave it like that. I have to go to the sneaky little pull down menu and hit apply or hit control A. And I always do this by mouse because I need to see that thing disappear before it, it before I move on. Otherwise, I know it didn't work. Now, let me show you the difference between that and something else. So I'm going to hit delete. Look at that. I just deleted the two-dimensional data. But if I delete this cube, see, I didn't do the Boolean split there. So I have to control Z, go back, and do it all over again. So remember, we're going to do this three more times. I'm going to click on the landmass itself. Add modifier, Boolean, and then I'm going to use a little eyedropper. Choose the next square, the next cube. Wait for it to process. Once it's processed, you have to hit apply. Now, guys, I can't tell you how many times I learned this and unlearned it just because I was rushing myself. I was like, yeah, I can do it. I can do it. And then I went down the road and I realized I forgot how to do this within five minutes. <laughs> you guys are probably going to have to watch this video several times. All right, not to annoy you guys, let's keep moving. So I'm going to keep doing what I was doing. Click on the landmass, Boolean, splitter, eyedropper, click on the mass that you want to delete, which is the cube. Wait for it. Apply. Apply. <laughs> All right, and then click on the cube. Ah, see, so now we ran into an issue here. So this is something that happens to me from time to time where I realize it's just because I need to move the cube ever so slightly before I do the splitting operation. So I hit control Z to go back and I'm just going to move the cube more up. You know what? I'm going to control Z two times over. Okay. So this is where I got to move the cube strategically. Oh, why is it doing that? See, there's always something that pops up for me with Blender, and it's incredibly frustrating. I'm going to go back just more than more than a few steps. It's never fluid, guys. I got to tell you that much. It's never, ever fluid. Even though I know how to do this, like the back of my hand, I still really run into multiple issues with this kind of stuff. Okay, so now I've moved the cube. You'll notice I just kind of moved it a little farther along. And now watch what happens. So I'm going to do the same process. Select the landmass, add modifier, Boolean splitting tool. And then I'm going to choose the eyedropper and then the cube. Okay, 
So once that's applied, it did it again. Oh man, that's frustrating. Okay, so I'm gonna say apply anyway and see if I can't delete it. Ah, see, I in, I have to go back. So control Z. So guys, the reason why I'm doing this is because if I delete that, it's gonna delete the whole thing because for some reason it included the whole project in that cube. I'm so sorry if I'm not making any sense right now. Blender can be frustrating, guys. I, I got to say that much. Blender is not for the faint of heart. So let me actually increase my size. I think I know what's happening finally is that one of the mountains are just above the cube's plane. So it's not really cutting the whole thing and it's intermeshing. So let's see if that fixes it. So I barely resize the cube. I'm going to do the same process where I select the land, add modifier, boolean, eyedropper, select the cube, and the cube only. And watch what happens. It did it again. I hate Blender. I hate Blender sometimes. Okay. Oh my God, guys. Okay. Let me just do this. Okay. You're going to go hit apply. Come on. Now you guys know why I don't make videos because this, this. Okay. Delete. Ah, see, I don't know why it's doing that. I might need to just edit out a lot of that. So I might just do that down the road because I don't want you guys to sit through this. Oh my God. I will never teach Blender as long as I live. I am doing that right now, but I mean, you can't, you can't pay me to do this. That's why I'm doing it for free. Anyway. Split it with that giant mammoth cube. There, it's done it. All right, game on. Let's apply. All right, guys, moment of truth. Let's get rid of this stupid thing. Ah, ha, ha, yeah, that's it. I don't know why, guys, but that's just the way Blender is. It, it has these stupid little idiosyncrasies, and you got to waste your life a little bit to get this. So, guys, you got to earn it, all right? So now I'm noticing that this topographical detail is a little exaggerated, so I'm going to bring it down just a bit. And most of the time I'm kind of doing this by eye. So here's a little town of Vampire, just hiding a little freshwater lake in there, the beauty of the Alps. But uh, yeah, this place is one of the most beautiful places in the world, guys. According to you know what I saw when I was 19, this place is awesome. Okay, so now let me show you guys how to export this feature. Okay, so Notice when I select this, you can see how much, how many triangles it's composed of. And there's 220,000 triangles. And that's quite a bit. So let's take a look at that. You'll notice I clicked on that, that little shader feature up here in the top left. And as you zoom up on that, that's a lot of triangles. That's a lot of topographical detail. So I'm going to simplify it even further because when you load this into Web AR, you need it to be down to like 20 or 30 kilobytes. Like if there's any more than that, you're going to have a hard time seeing it. So this is why I'm going to reduce the triangles. And for those of you who are wondering what kind of tool this is, this is called the Spark AR Toolkit. You'll have to install it in your, your plugins. And I can't remember where I did that. <laughs> anyway, so let's do this. I'm going to go, I'm going to reduce it by 50%. And so once I do that, I have to click slightly off of that in order to get it to do its thing. Now you'll notice I did simplify it and now it's down to 110,000 or 110K, but look what it did. It completely ruined the texture and detail. Now, I don't know about you guys, but that's ugly. I hate that. So I'm going to not do that. I'm going to control Z and go back. And this is where I get hung up, honestly, because I like the way it looks now. And I honestly don't know what I did in the past to make it not that way. But I'm just going to export it. So I'm going to export it back to GLB and put it right back where it belongs in its 3D scans folder. And it's called Champere, Switzerland. That's the one. Export. And so what I just did is I overwrote the old one that was like way up there at 600,000 kilobytes. 
And now I'm just going to go right back into MeshLab and just re-upload the same thing. So I'm going to start with a new empty project, import mesh, and it's going to be the same thing. I'm in 3D Skins, Champeray, 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 Switzerland. Oh my gosh, that's the one. I don't know which one it is. <laughs> Oh boy, guys, welcome to my world. That's a GLB. That's the one I want. Okay. Open. Okay. And that's more like it, right? Like before it was like this little slit and you couldn't really see it. You have to hold the Alt key in MeshLab. I forgot about that. MeshLab does a really good job of making things look a lot better. And it's kind of an older program. But look at those beautiful Swiss Alps, right? All right, so now I'm going to apply it even further with the same tool we used earlier in the filters menu. And then we go down to remeshing, simplification, and reconstruction. Simplification, quadratic, ed. My tongue is going to fall out of my face, guys. And I'm just going to say apply. So once I do that, it will become a little less. So if I zoom back up on that, you'll see that it's a little bit more like you know simplified no shit sherlock and in my previous experience guys i'm going to simplify it one last time so i'm reopening that window it's funny but you can't just do it over and over if you leave this window up and you keep hitting apply it looks like it's doing something but it really doesn't idiosyncrasies i don't get it all right, guys, now we're down to the target number of faces at 55,000 triangles. That's exactly what I want. And look at this. Our, our hills and our mountains aren't that, they aren't that, you know, destroyed in the process. But this is glacier country, guys. Let's get this going. So I'm going to export this once again. Export mesh as. And remember, we have to do it as a .obj. So I'm going to go to this guy and I'm going to overwrite the old one, just overwrite the old file, say 